So lately we've been going on a lot of walks. And um, the other day we came back from a walk with our grandpa out in the woods. I was missing a good friend, Fipper. This is uh, my trusty old pair of flip flops I got back from Bali over in Indonesia. It's a pretty cheap pair, but they're my favorite favorite set of flip flops. And um, out in the woods, I like to uh, go barefoot. So I take my flip flops along, and then whenever we reach the woods, I'll just carry my flip flops. Anyways, we had a great time out in the woods, but by the time we got back to the road, um, I was going to put my flip flops on, and I noticed I was only carrying one shoe. So somewhere along the trail, yeah, you know, I was just holding holding my flip-flops like this and one of them I guess fell and I didn't even realize it. So today we're on the search for Fipper. We gotta find him. So it should only be about like a 10 minute walk down the road here along the sidewalk. Then we cut across the street into the woods and um, retrace our steps. Hey boys, wait up. I'm excited about going on a walk today. These woods, they're a lot of fun. They're nothing like the Indonesian jungles, but man, they are pretty cool. They're very, very mysterious. So the trail over there is kind of blocked off by all that construction. So we kind of came roundabout way to this big uh, power line area. It's it's really interesting. It's actually kind of cool. But um, yeah, it's kind of sad. All these woods that you see behind me, and all these over there, it's all gonna be gone in a couple years. They're gonna make houses in this whole place. And so you know, we kind of saw the beginning of that with that construction down there. So, I mean, you know, people gotta have houses, but it's kind of sad at the same time because there's a lot of wildlife that lives in these woods. Um, just the other day, my grandpa was driving in his car and he saw this big old black bear just kind of wandering down the road. So, who knows if he was from here and now he's trying to find a quieter place to live or something. I don't know, it's kind of a bad situation because, I mean, on the one side, you know, people own this land and they're making houses there, it's totally within their rights, but it's kind of sad for the wildlife too. Well, that was a little bit of a detour, but now we're off to find Fipper. Back on track. This is crazy. You know, it's so flat here. This is probably the highest point in all of Niceville. A giant sand mound. I'm assuming it was just for leveling all this area out. They probably just piled up all the sand. The boys are monkeying around. Yeah, this big sand dune is kind of ugly, but it sure is fun to climb on. Man, the sand dune is so much fun. It's really the only place where you can actually go uphill in all of Florida. Come on, Keanu, let's keep going. All right, coming. Be careful. All right, let's cruise. So since we're trying to retrace our footsteps to find the foot flop, we have to remember which trails we went on, which is actually kind of hard because once you get in the woods, there's not really any point of reference and so it becomes a big labyrinth. There's all these twist crosses on the trail, so we're going to have to test our memory today. I think this is the right one that heads to where Fipper is. Um, Asher actually took some pictures on our last trip through here, and one of those pictures Hudson is holding was it holding one or two? Both of them. Holding both of them. Okay, so we know that up until that point, he had both his flip-flops. Yeah, so, so we're gonna head that way, and then after we get past that point, we'll know we're on the right track and 
keep a sharp lookout. Exactly. So that's the mission right now. These woods have always sparked the mystery inside of me. Very mysterious, very interesting. Who knows what could be going on down here. I heard stories that there used to be bands of smugglers that hid out here in these woods. So this is a very common feature to um, the woods here in Florida. This is deer moss. Um, it's really pretty. It's just a type of moss that covers the ground all over the forest here. It's pretty popular around here. There's even a neighborhood close by that's named after it. So, yep, it's a good, it's a good um, fire starter as well. So lots of use, useful aspects of it. So we were on our way back, actually here to the States, and we stopped by the tropical island of Bali for just a couple weeks. I needed a pair of flip flops. And I was attracted to these, uh, the Fipper brand, because they're biodegradable. They're eco-friendly flops. I thought, oh yeah, that would be a good route to go. So I ended up buying these. But now, you know, that I've lost one, I'm worried that because it was biodegradable, it's already started to um, decay. I hope we don't run into that bear. Ah, you guys, here we go. Remains of a honeycomb. Oh, nice. Too bad there's not any larvae in there because you can actually eat the baby larvae of um, bees. Growing up, we did that. This they don't wasp, taste man. essentially very good, but extra nutrients. Anyways, we're right on track. I remember coming through here last time. You know, growing up overseas, especially in the tribe, all of our friends went around barefoot everywhere they went. And um, we just kind of picked up on it as well. Uh, for us in the jungle, we went through so many pairs of shoes. We tried a million different brands, different five finger brands, um, and all of our shoes would just get blown out within half a year. So going barefoot was just kind of the way to go. Saved money and was also the best way to travel. Uh, just because in the jungle, everything is so slippery, you're slipping all the time. But when you have your bare feet, you can really grip the, the ground better. So we found we got less injuries just going barefoot than with shoes on. So it's kind of stuck and we continue to go barefoot a lot. That's why I lost this guy. All right, we're starting to have a slight implant now. Huh, that's weird. I see something really shiny over here. That is very strange. It looks like a giant roof or something. Hold on. Wait a second, hold on, check this out guys. This is really interesting though, hold on. It'd be really quiet. Spider web. Huh. Well, look at there. That is a building. And also a small road leading to our. Just be quiet. Huh? It's probably been years since we've been here. Oh, look at those fish, guys. Oh, yeah. It's like bluegills. Oh. Look at here, I'm on the fishing pole. Hello? Oh, man. Anyone home? Yeah, nobody's been here for a while. Dude, this place is deserting, guys. Well, look at this guy. Dead oh. bird. Okay. Wow. Poor little guy. I wonder if he just flew into the window. That's kind of creepy, that's Cruz. From the look of the place, it looks like it hasn't been used in a really long time. Well, look at this canoe right here, it's totally overgrown. And yeah, that hasn't been used in a couple of years. This place is crazy. We're out here in the middle of nowhere and there's just this little cabin on this little lake. It's a sweet setup. And we have this beautiful little pond, this little shack that goes over it, obviously it's for fishing. They have their little canoe. That's we gotta explore this place out. I wanna look all around here. Yeah. Let's go see what we can find. Whoa. It's kinda weird. Looks like he was a hunter. I think that's probably what you used to hang up your deer on while you're skinning it. It's kinda creepy back here. Goodness gracious. It's a sweet setup. I like this shack. I could totally live out here. Whoa, it's over here. Huh, interesting. 
Yeah, whoever's around here definitely liked shooting guns. Man, what a crazy place. Yeah, this is, you know, someone else's property, so we're just kind of giving it some distance, and we'll make our way to the other side of the pond to explore a little bit. Um, but yeah, we want to be respectful of this guy's belongings, so we won't mess with anything. I don't know. It's a very mysterious place. Sweet little platform over there. Oh yeah, I can fully imagine myself sitting down here lounging and reading a book. Oh man, you know, it really is nice to just kind of get away from the city for a little bit. This is just being on God's creation, it really is amazing. Whether you're on a lonely mountaintop or you know, so many coral reefs or even here in the States out in the woods, even just being in your backyard, sometimes just being out in creation and really reminds you that God made everything. You can see his handiwork and learn about him. It really is an amazing thing because all this creation around us, it, such, it just points straight to God. And just like it's in Paul said in Romans, you know, creation, it shows God's invisible attributes to all people. So no matter where you live, whether you're in some remote little tribe or in a big city, you can always see God's creation around you. It really points to his invisible, invisible attributes and it shows everybody that there is a God because they can see what he's created. And so, you know, today in our culture, here in America, there's a lot of people who say that um, they try to take God out of the equation because they don't want to believe in Him. And so they say that everything around us just kind of happened by chance, I guess. It kind of boils down to that. But, um, I don't know. I've always found that really hard to believe because we see around us in creation invisible attributes of a very smart, very creative person. I mean, it's kind of like this mysterious house over there. You know what I mean? We come from this house and we don't know much about it. It's just a house out here, but immediately we know certain facts about it. One, that somebody built it. It's not just like there was a tornado and the pine trees broke apart and flew together to form a house. That's just silly. There's no amount of time, no amount of energy, no amount of chance can make that happen. There's obviously a builder behind them. And so in the same way, we can see the incredibly, incredibly complex creation around us and see that there's no way this could happen by chance. There had to be a creator. And so, you know, nowadays we're coming up with all these cool theories that show and cool science and facts that show that there had to be a creator to find all this. But way back in the day, God was saying on his word, even before they had all that science, and he was saying, yep, look around you, you can see all my invisible attributes through my, what I've made, my creation. And so that's really cool. And it's really cool to get out in God's creation because, yeah, you're close to what he's made and you can learn a lot about him through what he has created. So I was looking for these frogs and I happened to stumble upon a snake, black snake. I think it might be a water moccasin, which are highly venomous, so we're gonna be careful. But he's just chilling over here in the pine straw. I'll be starting to move. The problem with trying to find a brown shoe in the woods is that everything is brown and there's a lot of leaves that look just like the shoe. And so it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. We're going to have to really keep our eyes peeled if we want to go home with two foot flops instead of just one. Still no luck. No way. Are you serious? Hey guys. <laughs> there it is. Hey boys. Boys, I found it. Oh, I gotta go show the boys. This is too much. Asher has the other flop. I can't believe it. What are the chances? I was really thinking, just because of its coloring wise, it would be just camouflage. There's no way we're gonna find it, but hey, here it is, and it has not biodegraded. Even a little bit. Even the sticker, which is kind of concerning. It seems like it, I don't know, maybe it is just 100% plastic and it doesn't biodegrade. I'm so happy to have it though. Hey boys, found it. Uh, it was right where I caught a frog last time. Reunited the suede. No way. Yeah. That's so exciting. All right. Hudson. Fantastic. Got my flip flop back. Are you gonna put them on? Hey, thanks for helping yeah, me find can. them, boys. No yeah. worries. Hey, let's. It was perfect. It's about to get it. Yeah.
Yeah, it's still in really good condition. Oh man, All right. looking good. Now you can have some shoes to wear when you All go. right. <laughs> I'm surprised because it rained a lot. And it was right where I would have just been beaten by the sun. But um, looks great. I'm happy. Time to head home. Maybe I'll wear them this time instead of holding them.